This morning, a local organization used an outing in downtown Sioux Falls to raise awareness about mental health. Plus, gunfire and chaos at a casino in Wisconsin. We'll tell you about a shooting that left two people dead and the suspected gunman killed by police. Good morning. This is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your Sunday. We also have your boredom busters coming up, but first, our top story. A local nonprofit kicked off Mental Health Awareness Month with an event in downtown Sioux Falls Saturday. Lost and Found focuses on promoting mental health among people ages 15 to 34. A portion of drink sales at Severance Brewing Saturday went to the organization's suicide prevention program. What I hope for really for today is um, that people are able to um, embrace sort of the outdoors, be able to be outside and enjoy uh, a sunny day outside while also being able to know sort of what that impact and what um, a simple act can do to help somebody who's navigating a mental health condition. Lost and Found has chapters at five South Dakota universities. According to the CDC, half of all Americans are diagnosed with a mental illness at some point in their life with conditions like depression being the third most common cause of hospitalization in the U.S. for people aged 18 to 44. Authorities in Wisconsin are investigating a shooting at a casino that killed two people and seriously wounded a third person. The shooting happened last night at the Oneida Casino attached to a Radisson Hotel outside of Green Bay. Police responding to the scene shot and killed the gunman. Investigators believe the gunman was targeting a specific person he was anger, angry at but that person was not in the casino at the time. Four astronauts made a rare splash down in darkness early this morning in the Gulf of Mexico near the Florida Panhandle. And there are the boats starting to chase after Dragon um, to begin their recovery operations as soon as Dragon lands. The SpaceX Dragon capsule returned to Earth six and a half hours after departing the International Space Station. The astronauts, three American and one Japanese, spent nearly six months at the orbiting laboratory. SpaceX delayed their homecoming four days because of high offshore winds. Managers switched to a pre-dawn splashdown to take advantage of calm weather. It's the first U.S. crew splashdown in darkness since the Apollo 8 moonshot way back in the 1960s. Let's get our first check of the forecast now with meteorologist Adam Root in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. We're off to a cloudy start to the day across much of Kelloland with some rain in a couple of areas, too. Downtown is our first stop this time around, 64 with a northeast wind at 13 miles per hour. We did see just a teeny bit of rainfall earlier, but the bulk of the moisture was to the north on I-29, closer to Brookings and Watertown, as well as in northwestern parts of South Dakota, where they desperately need any help they can get. Spencer at 65 this morning, 63 in Yankton, 59 toward Mitchell as well as at the Capitol, 55 in Aberdeen, 53 as you head toward Rapid City, but Custer sitting at 45. Winds have been generally tolerable out of the north more often than not at 5 to 10 miles per hour, but a few exceptions to the rule in a couple of locations. There's the rain I'm talking about. Some light scattered showers in southern and southeastern South Dakota. Some more moderate rain as you head toward uh, the Marshall area in Ortonville, just a little bit to the southwest of Wilmar as well, but also some much needed rainfall in northwestern South Dakota from Buffalo to Mobridge and into Eagle Butte. There are a few more chances for rain on the way, but if you want a repeat of Saturday's heat, unfortunately, you are going to be disappointed at the seven day forecast. We'll still talk about that and your Mother's Day weekend forecast coming up. All right. Thanks very much, Adam. Well, the Falls Park Farmers Market open for the season on Saturday. Customers were drawn to the wide array of homegrown and homemade products being sold by area vendors. There's produce, there's flowers, there's vegetables, uh, meat, cheese. Uh, one vendor has milk this year now, so I mean there's just about everything you can think of out here. The Falls Park Farmers Market is open every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. through October. Celebrate Loyalty Day in Brandon with the town's 55th annual parade. The parade starts at Brandon Valley High School at 11 a.m., heading west on Holly Boulevard to Main Avenue, ending at the VFW. The VFW Auxiliary will be selling food in the parking lot starting at noon. The Split Rock Fire Department is serving a pancake feed from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. The location is at 7, 7201 East Arrowhead Parkway in Sioux Falls. The Sioux Falls American Legion is also hosting a pancake feed. Serving time goes from 8.30 to 12.30 at the South Dakota Military Heritage Alliance located on West Russell Street. 
It's the opening day of the season for the historic Prairie Village. Activities include a train ride at 2 p.m. The season runs through September 6th. Prairie Village is located two miles west of Madison, South Dakota, on Highway 34. Car enthusiasts will want to attend the Spring Swap Meet at the WH Line Fairgrounds. The 17th annual event is for classic cars, trucks, street rods, muscle cars, and all things auto automotive. The Swap Meet runs from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. inside and outside of the Nordstrom Building at the Fairgrounds. The Red Rock Bar and Grill in Brandon is hosting a race party car show. You can check out local race cars and hot rods starting at 2 p.m. Adam? Uh, this is what we're going to be watching through the day, and that's much needed rainfall, but for some, not everybody. Scattered showers and the occasional thunderstorm will be possible as we head later into the day and into the evening as low pressure gradually gets on out of here. But any time we can get some rain, especially in northwestern and north central parts of Kelowland, it is going to be a good day considering how much they desperately need any kind of relief from the extreme drought conditions that have really impacted the area for a better part of the last several weeks. Even still seeing some moderate to severe drought headed down to the south and east into Sioux Falls and portions of northwestern Iowa as well, and even toward Pierre, Rapid City, and Spearfish. So we will get at least a little bit of help in that regard, but that's really going to be just about it. It is a little bit of help. Showers and thunderstorms also possible through the evening. You see some of those thunderstorms popping up in southwestern and southeastern portions of Kelowland. So keep an eye on the skies if you're going to head out and about anytime soon. Beyond that, we do get off to a dry start to the work and school week as low pressure gets on out of here. And then we're able to enjoy some more sunshine by the time we reach Tuesday. The catch to all of this is that the temperature is going to take a pretty decent hit. We were in the 80s and 90s on Saturday. East River especially, we're talking about 70s and low 80s today. But by Monday into really much of the work and school week, we will be firmly stuck in the upper 50s to mid 60s for high temperatures with a few more opportunities for some rainfall. And unfortunately, those cooler than average temperatures do stick around through Mother's Day weekend. But cooler than average by that point, is more in the low to mid 60s, considering average by next Sunday will be in the upper 60s. So it's all relative. 70s and low 80s again along and east of the Missouri River Valley today. 50s and 60s to the west as cooler air gradually moves on in. Lows tonight in the 40s to the east, 30s to the west with some lingering scattered showers and the occasional rumble of thunder, especially before midnight. And we get that improvement in place as we head into the start of the upcoming work and school week. Here's your seven day forecast as we do stay dry Monday and Tuesday, a little more sunshine for the latter of those two days. Then another chance for rainfall Wednesday and the Thursday for Sioux Falls with a chance for a few isolated sprinkles late Saturday. But you notice highs by day struggle to get out of the low to mid 60s with lows in the mid 30s on occasion, even some low 30s in northeastern and western parts of Kelowland. So if you want to do some planting, you are going to have to be mindful of those overnight low temperatures as they do drop toward levels where frost are possible. Have a great day, everybody. For more information on local news, weather and sports, you can always head on over to Kelowland.com.